All right, is this good enough for everyone to hear me? So I know technically I'm not supposed to start for about three and a half more minutes, but I have a coworker who has this immediately after we do with no setup time. So we're gonna try to go through my slides, uh, go through the demonstration and answer any of your questions and leave him uh, about a five minute gap so that he can come in and set up. Um, today we're talking, how many of you guys are familiar with the pro uh, production mapping or defense mapping solution in ArcGIS? Okay, good, we have a few customers. How many of you guys are using the product, uh, product, product on demand or pod application? Okay, so that's what we're gonna be talking about today is generating maps on the web using the, the pod application or product on demand application. We have a couple versions of the application. One is the production mapping specific, one is the defense mapping specific. Really the application, uh, the JavaScript portion of the application, there's nothing different behind it. The big difference between the defense and the production is the uh, products that it supports, and I'm gonna show you guys a, a mix of products that both of the applications support. Uh, but if you guys see anything you like and, and wanna further discuss that, um, know that there's a difference between the what the production uh, mapping version supports and what the defense mapping version supports. So with Esri defense mapping uh, for server and Esri production mapping for server, what you get to start you off for the entire product on demand experience is all of our toolbox, all of our configuration files, all of our cross-reference databases, all of the configuration files uh, for the application that I'm gonna show you guys uh, during the demo. Inside, in the box for, with uh, defense mapping for server and production mapping for server, you guys get everything, including the empty database schemas that you guys need to actually set up, load data into, and start running products. Uh, this includes all of our grid XMLs and MXD templates. Uh, for the those who know what production mapping is, how many of you know what TDS or MGCP are? Okay, we have a few people who will know what I'm talking about here. So with the TDS and MGCP schemas, they're very specific to the defense mapping community. Um, and they're used behind the scenes in the application to actually uh, output some of these products that you're gonna see. How, it, uh, how the pod application works is we have all of our data sitting behind the scenes, which can be in web services, it can be in um, w, uh, WFS services, it can be in enterprise databases or file geo databases and that's consumed by the uh, application. We have a service out there called the Gateway Service that looks at all that data, looks at the base maps, looks at the uh, grid XMLs, pulls all of that in and starts running a process on it. Uh, we're gonna talk in a, just a couple minutes about the process that's being run on everything, but the process is all run through the Gateway Service, um, and then the end output of the Gateway Service is to push out either a production PDF a PDF file, a map package, or what we're calling a zip package, which is basically everything that's needed, including the data, zipped up into a zip file. So you guys have all the different options of exporters uh, going from production PDF all the way out to zip packages. Now, here's a sample of what the application actually looks like. Um, and during the demo, I'm gonna walk you guys through this, show you some different products. We're gonna attempt to run some products, but I have to warn you, the internet here has been kinda on and off, so um, I have some saved on my machine just in case if the demo takes too long. But this is what the application looks like. You're, you end up selecting your products, selecting your area of interest, and exporting it. And when it's done, and we don't have one in the image, when it's done, you get a link and when you click on that link, it allows you to either download it or view it inside of uh, uh, Chrome. Uh, here are some of the products that we are able to create with the pod application. This, uh, for anyone familiar with MGCP, this is a standard uh, topographic line map that's used for uh, TDS and MGCP. We're also able to push out um, this is a 100K using the TDS ICM uh, specification. Uh, this is a production mapping version of the same uh, topographic map. It just has their surround and their specific uh, data rather than the TDS or MGCP. We have 
uh, imagery maps that we're able to do. We have generalization. Generalization is actually one of the big parts that we built in uh, right before UC last year. We can take data from, that was collected at a scale of one to 25,000 and generalize it all the way out to one to 100,000. So any scale in between we're able to generalize the data out for through the pod application. So you click on the AOI you want, you click export, it runs through the generalization process, it does all the finishing, and it uh, pushes out this end result uh, map document. If you guys are interested in generalization, this is one of the ways that we've been able to automate the generalization process. Um, we do have the topographic maps, and this is just using a topographic base map, um, and this was, was desired by the uh, US Forest Service. Um, they wanted to be able to push out any topographic map and print it out for anybody that was in the area. So we threw together a product for them uh, to do that. We have a strip map, which I'm gonna show a sample of. The strip map uh, and the next one, the map book, are actually really cool because it collates the pages. When you export, you select multiple AOIs. The gateway service goes through and collates all of it into a single page PDF so that you have your index page, you have a, and then you have all your, uh, all your pages in line following the route that you chose on your strip map. Um, the strip map, if any of you have ever heard of the riverine map or transportation map, it's the same idea. You follow a feature with your uh, pointer in the application, it creates the areas of interest, and it starts exporting them in order and collates them into a PDF for you. The next one is even a, uh, a little bit cooler, and I'm gonna show a, a sample of this one as well. This is a map book. We're using data-driven pages behind the scenes so that we select AOI, our areas of interest. It builds those areas of interest out uh, to the right scale and page size, and then it throws all the information into data-driven pages, and it gives you the overview page, it gives you a index page, and then it has data-driven pages running all the other pages behind it. This can be used, uh, we have a lot of customers interested in using this, but none actually using it at this time. But this can be used to create any type of map book or map series uh, for your organization. The last one is a simple points of interest map. This is really just a concept map to show you that we can throw any data behind the scenes, we can throw any MXD behind the scenes, and still run it with a, a viable output. Um, a majority of these were created as samples to show industry users, and the industry users have taken those and created them into their specific uh, needs. This is what the, the pod application allows you to do. Create maps, take our samples, and turn them into what your industry actually needs. Um, I doubt you guys want to get bored with this, but so I, I talked about earlier the folder structure and the databases and all that stuff that's sitting behind the scenes. This is uh, what the folder structure looks like so you guys will know exactly what you need or, or what little you need to actually run any of these. When you install ArcGIS Server, it installs a ArcGIS Server folder, typically at C ArcGIS Server. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever, ever uh, installed ArcGIS Server and know what I'm talking about here, right? Anyone? No? Bueller, Bueller, okay, got a few. We have inside the defense mapping install, we have an MCS pod folder with a set of basic folders underneath it, but the MCS pod folder, if you put it into the ArcGIS, if you copy it from the install directory, put it into the ArcGIS directory, you have your kind of framework or backbone for the entire pod application. The next one is your products directory. Inside your products directory is kind of where the magic happens in the pod application. This is where your enterprise uh, geodatabase connection files are. This is where your grid XMLs are. This is where your map templates are. This is quite literally what you need to get up and running with the pod application. The, we already deliver all of the uh, configuration files. You copy them over to your web server. You set up your web server's name uh, inside the configuration file and you put your data here and you are up and running with a pod application to automate the map process. 
And when I talk about automating the map process, this is exactly what I'm talking about. For the defense specific side and the, the production mapping side is a little bit different because they used uh, cached tile layer, cached tile layers. Sorry, I'm talking too fast for my own good. Um, and they pull those tile layers into the maps and print them out. But on the defense mapping side, we go through and because we have the TDS and uh, MGCP schema that we know, um, we can check, okay, does it have contours? Does it have spot heights? Have the contours been thinned? Have the spot heights been thinned? If they haven't, we can go in and actually, uh, or the pod application automates that process. So if contours and spot heights haven't been created, um, if they haven't been thinned or gone through the entire process, the application is actually smart enough to read those properties on the feature class and take the following steps to do all that. After that's done, we have a tool that runs building offsets, which will rotate your uh, buildings so that they don't overlap roads or uh, based off an angle of orientation field. So if you have a building that uh, has an attribute saying it's rotated 45 degrees, this tool will actually take that representation and rotate it 45 degrees. Um, we have bridge overrides, which is very similar. It rotates all the bridge features so that they match up with the road features or so they align with the road features. Um, and then we calculate and apply uh, visual specification or, or representations. How many of you are familiar with visual specification? Okay, I got one or two here. <laughs> At least I'm not talking to, to people that just absolutely don't know what VST is. Um, after we apply the representations, we can go into the map document and we can populate the map sheet info, which is all the surround tags get updated based off information in the area of interest feature class. So in that feature class, instead of you going in and manually updating all of your surround elements, so you update the title, you update your, um, the, the configuration, the date that it was created or the date that the data was created, we have a tool that reads a feature class that has those as attributes for each area of interest and it goes through and populates those tags in the MXD. Um, we also make grids and graticules. The make grids and graticules uh, specific to this is not the core uh, make graticules tool. This is uh, specific to the defense industry and we're making uh, MGRS grids. Um, we create the data for the create adjoining sheet guide data which are the um, data frames down in the corner. Um, we also have the elevation guide data uh, box which has um, bands and spot heights in it if any of you know what elevation bands are. Um, so we're able to create all that on the fly through the application and output this MXD product. Now for some of the products that we fully support in the installations, and we're not gonna talk about any of the custom products here. We obviously have our MTM 50 and MTM 100, which uses um, the MGCP data schema. The TM 50 and TM 100, which is very, very similar, but it uses LTDS uh, specification. We, you have our sample points of interest map built into the application so that you guys can go through and configure it for whatever you want. We have imagery based products we have the map book and map atlas, which it's rather new and I'm really excited about this one. So I, I'm not just the moron sitting up here talking. I'm the guy who actually does all the programming and stuff in the background on this. The map book was a huge feat for us because it took us, uh, it, it's leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the products. Um, and then we have the strip map, which again, that's something that's really exciting being able to select your AOI or select your, your line feature it creates a series of areas of interest and is able to collate all those into one map book or uh, one single PDF. Uh, the topographic navigation, this was the one that the um, uh, USGS was interested in so that we could uh, take a look and they can spit out maps at multiple scales um, whenever they need it for any area that they have data coverage for. We have our generalization which I talked about which is again very exciting. And then we have the production mapping um, 25K and 50K products. So uh, defense mapping sticks in the world of 50K, 100K, up to 250K. Production mapping goes on the other side 
and starts doing some of those uh, uh, larger skills with the 25K and the 50K, and I believe they have a 10K product as well. Um, so this is actually a slide to set me up for my demo, so let me... Uh, this, let me change something real fast so I can see what you guys are seeing. All right. So this is the application. This is just our demo application with a bunch of products that we've built into it. We have all the MTM products going all the way down to the strip map and map book. Uh, the first one I'm going to fire off today is the uh, points of interest because it takes the quickest. Uh, or it takes the shortest amount of time, so it's gonna let me know if there's any hiccups in the network right now. Um, basically, all we're doing right now is we have imagery uh, sitting in an MXD that's saved in that products folder. We have some data sitting in that MXD. And when we run the pod application, it's taking this area of interest that I created when I selected the area, it's pushing that back into the map and then it's doing a bunch of Python to say, update this to the map, or update the map to the area of interest, create grids over it, make sure that my data is sourced so we don't have any broken links in the background, and then it goes through exporting it to a PDF so that we have an output PDF sitting in the background. And what you get is something similar to this. Um, well, I picked a bad area because I didn't get any area features. It looks like all I got were points in there, but that's okay. One of the other more interesting products, and I'm gonna see if, ah, clear all extents. All right. So as you can see, we selected four areas of interest here. Um, we're gonna export this into the uh, map book that I was talking about earlier. It's gonna create, uh, based off the page size, um, ah. Okay. It doesn't like me, and this is why you guys never do live demos, right? So I'm gonna pull up one that I ran yesterday. Uh, this is a slightly different area than what we ran it over. But you can still see, I still selected uh, four areas of interest and it created 15 for me based off the page size and scale. It created this cover sheet with all of my sheets listed on top here. Um, wow, my map is a little, or my, uh, the scroll on my mouse is a little sensitive, so I do apologize. Um, we have our index page that has a legend on it. It has a slope uh, guide, a conversion graph, all of the basic or necessary information that you guys actually need in a legend page. Um, I'm gonna scroll down this way. So we did get some water in here, so let's go through the first couple. Oh wait, we're getting a little bit of land. Here we go. So if you guys take a look at this, it tells you it join what pages it joins. So if you look at where uh, the cursor is, joins no page, joins page number three, page number five, page number nine. And then we have an index down here that highlights what page you're actually on in this entire process. Um, and then we have a north arrow, but really any of the surround, any of the text elements that are in here can be completely replaced by your organization. Whatever surround elements you guys want in there, you guys can throw in there because the idea is the map already exists with the data-driven pages properties. The Python behind the scenes that's running it already exists. The surround doesn't make a difference. So if you guys want to uh, change the page size or start um, <coughs> altering the surround elements or some of the other uh, data frames that are in the map, that's, it, it's literally no work at all. You just add it in and you make sure that those properties are accessible by data-driven pages, and you're able to run the product um, as, as a customized product. But coming through this, this is, uh, as you can see, 
we're going page by page, area by area, and it collates it into a single PDF, which is, I think, you know, like, like I said, this is leaps and bounds ahead of the other products that we have for the, the TM50 or MTM50, simply because we're accessing data-driven pages behind the scenes, and we're manipulating so much there to make sure that you get this refined map book at the end of it. Um, another one. is our strip map. This is another one and I'll, I'm not gonna actually run it through the application because it doesn't seem to like me right now. Um, but I will show you how the areas of interest are created or selected through the strip map. So if I wanna follow a transportation network, I take my cursor and I follow that transportation network and it creates all of those areas of interest that are needed for the strip map. Now, when you're selecting these uh, products, as you can see, it's going through selecting them one by one. When I hit export, it's actually gonna export it in the order that it drew, so that the first page is gonna be this page down here, and then this will be the last page. Um, we do have a sample with a little bit different area. I didn't go to that full extent that I did last time. But as you can see, I, I started from the bottom and went to the top on this one. I have sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. Again, we have the legend page or the index page for you guys, which can have any of your information in it, of course. And this is a sample of how it gets created. Uh, for this, we're using MGCP data behind the scenes. You can use any data behind the scenes, like I said, with the map book. This is really, we have a template out there, we have data out there for a sample. You guys can replace it with your data, you guys can add your own surround, you guys can make it neat, uh, neat and pretty according to your uh, user needs. Um, but right now we just wanted to throw it out there in the same format that Riverine maps are created, uh, seeing that uh, I do work with the defense side of it and Riverine maps are kind of a big deal in, in the defense industry. Um, but if you look, we actually overlap the pages. So on this very top one, you can see the areas of interest are overlapping to a certain extent. That happens uh, when the AOIs are created, but inside the map, we actually do have that overlay so that you can match up the two sheets um, so that you can lay them out and actually have the actual route descripted. Um, and here's the last page of this one. Now, the last one that we've already taken probably too much of a look at, but this is my team's kind of core uh, uh, bread and butter moneymaker right here is the MTM50. Um, this uses the MTM uh, data schema. Uh, we're using TRD44 right now. Um, we have all of the representations uh, that we're able to calculate. Now, Sitting behind the scenes before this is run, we have a database where data has been collected, it's been QA, QC'd, that's it, nothing else has been done. The pod process, or the process we have the pod application running through, added the representations, created the contours, and I know at this uh, level it's kind of hard to see the contours until I come in, but we created the contours, we created the spot heights, we rotated all the buildings, we rotated all the bridges, we thinned out all the spot heights, we thinned out any um, overpopulated or over dense building areas. We created all of the data for the boundary guide, the adjoining sheet guide, and the elevation guide. We, it goes through and automatically updates all the, um, element, or all the uh, elements in the surround, like the north arrow, the, the meter reference guide, and the slope guide. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, we also, updated all of the text and surround. So inside the template, this is a tag that says title. We updated it with the name of the area of interest. Um, as you can see, we actually don't have an addition on here because the data doesn't have an addition behind the scenes, but it does have a series and sheet number. So all the tags initially look like this addition tag and they're replaced with actual real live text. Um, 
And then we also created, uh, or the, the pod application also created the grids that you see here. Uh, and like I said earlier, these are the uh, MGRS and geographic grids meshed together because we work specifically uh, in the defense and intelligence world and with the MGCP user group, we stick to the MGRS uh, grid system. Um, now I promised Steve that I would try to give him a little bit of time to come in here and set up so he doesn't have to run in. We have nine minutes left. Are there any questions right now? Yes. Um, Clint, I see you're in here. Do we have any tutorials posted online or would that be something that we send? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I can definitely uh, help you with that. I just didn't know if uh, they have anything set up online or not. Yes. I, I'm sorry, can you speak up? Export each map into its own? Yeah, you can export, if you do it as a uh, zip package or map package, it comes as a MXD instead of being a PDF or production PDF. We also added in um, an option to export only as an MXD, but we had some, some corruption issues with that that we were not sure how to figure out. So we started zipping everything up and that solved the problem. Was there anything else, any other questions? All right, thank you very much for attending. I'm gonna see if Steve is ready to start setting up.